now your main event. Introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling with Friends. This is your news of the week. WWE signs a multi-year deal to put NXT on the CW starting in October of 2024. War Games was announced and now it's team versus team as WWE has dropped the brand versus brand for brand supremacy. That was a lot of brands. Are you team Judgment Day or team Cody Rhodes? Also, Vince McMahon sold 8 million shares of his TKO stock. Is he looking to finally retire and settle down or just pocketing some extra cash? Finally, stay tuned to Unsanctioned Thursdays for a rundown of AEW Full Gear here in Los Angeles. That is the news, and this is Wrestling with Friends. Jeff, I'm out of breath from Mike Michelson, the great newsman. How are you, sir? That was strong, Welcome. strong, strong opening. <laughs> Oh, I forgot the good I'm evening. feeling good. I always forget that. Oh, well, it's gone. It's gone forever. <laughs> now, if I bring it up, it uh, just goes wrong. Yeah, well, you know, when we get it, we get excited. And when we don't, that's what we expected. You know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, expect to be disappointed on this show. Sir, a lot happened in wrestling. And a lot is going to happen this week as well as we lead up to a pay-per-view. And as we lead up to both Full Gear and War Games. Should we just jump right into it, or do you want to say hello to the people? What Let's do, you, do what it. What do you feel like doing? All right. We'll uh, I'll say in. hello. What's up, everybody? How we feeling? How's everyone doing? Hope everyone had a good wrestling week. We love you guys. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the subs. Um, we are listening to you guys and, and reading what you write. We love you. That's all I wanted to say. There you go, people. The great Jeff Dye. Seth Rollins. Opened up Monday Night Raw. It was Monday Night Rollins' time, and he wanted to thank two people, Drew McIntyre and Sami Zayn. Um, he, If I'm remembering correctly, he rewore the pink Barbie suit, the poofy Barbie suit. I think so. I delete a lot of his wardrobe from my memory and just try to focus on <laughs> his sick-ass wrestling, and he's really good at promos, too. Sami Zayn interrupted him, and they had a real cool kind of humble moment together, which I thought was nice, and it felt sort of backstagey and and just very real and honest talking about he wants to give Sami Zayn an opportunity at the title because of what Sami Zayn did for him at Crown Jewel which was help protect his belt from the evil judgment day and Sami Zayn said yo I would love that opportunity thank you but I want to wait till you're 100% and the Seth Rollins character almost took offense to this instead of accepting it <laughs> respectfully because he's like hey 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 we're both veterans here when have we ever been 100%? Like, I wrestle no matter what. And it it's this sort of continuation of the Seth Rollins, I'm going to go until I'm broken story, which they're telling. And I think they've done a, a really good job doing it, especially through the Adam Pierce, the general manager of Raw, and Seth Rollins with his constant concern for his guy, his champion, and Seth's lack of concern because he's in it to win it. He's going to go till the wheels fall off. Whether that's true or not, the story's been cool. I've really enjoyed it. So Zayn accepted the challenge, and they agreed to fight later that night. Jeff, you saw the segment. What'd you think? Did you did you love his wardrobe, or did you delete it too? Oh, I never liked the wardrobe. I've never <laughs> never been a fan of the wardrobe. I, I think we're on the same page there. Wardrobe, <laughs> not, not cool. Uh, him, very, very cool. Big fan. I thought it was great, and I like any any. And this is something Jeff Dye wouldn't have said a year, maybe even a year ago. More Sami Zayn, the banner. I, I could watch Sami Zayn and Seth have a have a long, long, long thing. And I do like that they're not going this crazy. We're mad at each other route. It's more of a we respect each other route, which you know you've seen before in wrestling, but you don't see it often. So I like it. Sami Zayn is so unique. He's so representative of everyone in some way, shape, or form. Like anybody can relate to Sami Zayn at some level. And when they when he was in our living rooms every single week in the bloodline, getting picked on and humiliated, there's a large part of the wrestling world that could really relate to that, I think. And it endeared Sammy to us even more. And when he mm -hmm. finally got his comeuppance, it was as if everyone got their comeuppance. It was very Daniel Bryan-ish, except with Daniel Bryan, it was him winning the championship. With this, it was Sammy winning his freedom. And since then, I think he's been like the John McClain from Die Hard, 
where every guy who's watched that movie is like, that's what I'd do if I was in that situation. Right. Even though you'd be the guy hiding, doing cocaine and getting killed later on. Because that's <laughs> that's uh, that's what most well, average people do. But we want to be Sammy. Go ahead. Doesn't it seem like, um, and, and I could be completely wrong. So correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But it's almost like Sammy's tried every gimmick. And you know what the best thing for Sammy was? No gimmick. We, we 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 saw the the ska dancing guy. We tried. We saw him try to be like a pest, an annoying kind of pest. We I saw him like try to be the version of him. the hanger on in the bloodline. We saw him try to be a conspiracy guy. And obviously, these are not in order. But we've seen all the gimmicks that they've tried to make Sammy have. And Sammy's always had fans. And Sammy's always been a good worker. But we're kind of witnessing Sammy be his most popular, just being Sammy and not needing some sort of weird gimmick, but just this journeyman kind of guy who's a who's an awesome wrestler who we just like we just like Sami Zayn now because he's Sami Zayn it feels it feels real it feels like we don't need a, a shtick we can just name it we can just go Sami Zayn we don't have to say Sami Zayn the guy that's the conspiracy guy or Sami Zayn that wears stupid hats and ska dances you know like it's like we like this Sami Zayn and maybe I'm wrong but that's how I feel I think you nailed it I don't think you're wrong at all I I did not like ska dancing Sami Zayn. I like Sami Zayn, the human being. I met him once and he's a really nice guy. We spoke for like 45 minutes at a, at a house show while he was waiting to work or maybe he opened the show. I can't remember, but he was really nice, but I didn't like that version. It wasn't until, like you said, he, he, he dropped everything. I mean, this is a guy who had one gimmick where he was El Generico. The, the oh, generic yeah, right. luchador wrestler. You know what I mean? Like it was like, I am yeah. no one. And when he finally was just Sammy and it felt like he let us in, then everybody loved him. Everybody loved him, man. And he's just become this sort of cornerstone to the company now. And I, I believe they, they know that. And I believe they respect that. And I hope he knows that because the fans just love, love Sammy. We love you, Sammy. We love you so much, bro. Sammy's but this was a great segment, man. And it led, it led to a friggin' awesome match, which then led to, them getting attacked by the Judgment Day afterwards so they could take them out for good, which led to Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso coming out to make the save, which led to Adam Pearce, the general manager, coming out and announcing in not an awesome British accent like William Regal, which he should have said, it's time for war games for Survivor Series. <laughs> but it was this cool story that kind of played out throughout the whole episode. And credit to everyone that was involved because everybody did a good job, man. I really liked it. Next the Drew McIntyre situation. It's very mysterious, Jeff. We don't know if he's if he's angry with himself, if he's angry with the company, if he's angry with with career, maybe he's got lady problems. We don't we don't know what's going on with Drew McIntyre's <laughs> character, but he's coming in pissed off and he doesn't want to say anything. There's a lot of speculation that he's going to join the Judgment Day. I speculated that his contract is, well, I know his contract's coming up. Everybody knows that. But I speculated he may be leaving the company and so the company's not going to give him any big wins that would make them look bad. They want to devalue the talent as much as they can before, before talent asks for their release. We don't know what it is, but it's certainly been interesting. I hope it's all just story stuff. Cause I really like Drew McIntyre. I think he'd do well at AEW, but I think he'd do better at WWE and I hope he stays. But what did you, what did you think about his little backstage thing? We didn't get to see him wrestle, but we hardly ever do anymore unless it's in like tag matches and stuff like that. But I love Drew McIntyre. What'd you think of this? I like Drew McIntyre, but I think he needs some some big thing. He needs some thing to get us excited again. And maybe that big thing is leaving and going to AEW and seeing what he could be over there. Whatever he does, get rid of the sword. But other than that, I, I'm, I'm here Vince for McMahon, anything dude. Drew McIntyre not, does. That's Vince McMahon. You know McMahon, I love a giant. He gave him that sword, dude. That's not, that's <laughs> that not sword Drew's sucks. idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want that sword sucks so bad. <laughs> the sword sucks. <laughs> he doesn't need it, dude. He's like his arms are bigger than the sword. They're more deadly, dude. Yeah, he's a giant. I know you don't like Miz, so I won't make you talk about it. But he is going to wrestle Gunther for the IC title because Gunther feels the same way about the Miz as you do. But I do want to talk Zoe Stark, man. She won the battle royal. And she's going to wrestle Rhea Ripley. I, we've never talked about Zoe Stark really on the show before, but except in like the Trish Stratus, Becky Lynch thing, right? It, as like, here's some action that happened. 
I think she deserves to be talked about a little more than we have. I think she's really, really interesting. Her body is crazy sick. Like she's jacked or like Bruce Lee jacked and has a really interesting look, interesting face. She can talk on the mic a little bit. And I think she's getting better. I think when she started, she wasn't so good. But I think as she gets more comfortable, she's she's starting to improve and get a little better there. I All that said, I don't think she has a chance in hell of beating Rhea Ripley. I think this is a placeholder to, to, to keep Rhea occupied until they can get another story for her. But I am interested to see how she does because if the crowd gets behind her the way they did LA Knight, people can get rocket ships up their butts and and take off and have some good things happen. And I hope good things happen for her because I've, I'm finding her intriguing as a professional wrestler, my friend. What about you? I don't think anybody's got Rhea Ripley's n- number yet. Which Hell maybe is no. why Nia Jax is back. Maybe why Bianca Belair is going to make a big return. I think that like there are women in the in the place, but I still don't see anybody beating Rhea Ripley. She's the Not new Rhea. Charlotte Flair. And, She's uh, the new Roman Reigns. She's going to hold that thing for 400 yeah. days, man. Nobody's taking that belt off of Rhea Ripley straight. And I'm glad. Yeah, she's awesome she's on the good, mic. too hot, too big. She's super good in the backstage stuff. She's the leader of the Judgment Day. To lose that kind of, she loses some credibility. And sure. she's like this alpha personality, man. Like, she's just awesome. And until somebody's as good on the mic as she is, they got no shot of taking that belt off her. None. And we um, knew that early, too, on this podcast. If you go back to early episodes, we talked about, you know, they've got her in men's matches. I mean, that that tells you something yes, right there when they've got her <laughs> slamming, you know, back in the day she was slamming Dominique Mysterio and, and doing all this. You know, was like, we were like, well, this chick's going to be a huge star. She was punking him. And now yeah. they're wrestling, dating. That just means they're not really dating. Let's move on to AEW Dynamite, where there are basically two stories going on. One is the MJF has no friends and is the most hunted man in wrestling. And two is the Swerve and Hangman Page story. That's sort of their two main stories going on. So Swerve Strickland had a match against Penta, and I'm more interested in a story between him and Penta than I am him and Adam Hangman Page, to be honest with you. I would much rather them write something for them because the match they gave was, it was hot fire. It was, it man, it was so good. I loved watching it. It was like watching a fight scene in a movie from from like moment to moment in it. It was really, really cool. I love this match. I, I don't know why I don't get Hangman Page, but I don't. And so many people connect with him. Now, I felt the same way against Orange Cassidy and eventually came around a bit. And I like Orange Cassidy's matches a lot. His his mic work's not the best, but that's his gimmick is to not not care. So it kind of works for him. But I'm, I've never really been a Hangman Page guy. I'm a huge Swerve Strickland guy. I really hope he wins this. And I think he's going to win this, this rivalry. And that is going to move him in to hopefully a title picture. He, I don't understand why it's taken this long. MJF has had a million championship matches, even though he doesn't have his belt and he has a a scheduled one. Like there has to be room for this dude to get to the next level. He's really good on the mic. His style and energy is just super hot, sexy, dangerous. Like everything about him's cool. And I know you like him, Jeff. I know you do. This is easily my my match of the week. And I totally agree with you. You, you took exactly what I was going to say. I was like, I'd rather see a Penta and Swerve. Swerve is, I know everyone loves him and I know everyone gives him love, but I still think he's underrated. I think he's one totally. of the best wrestlers in AEW, WWE, TNA, out of anybody. Like Swerve is so, so, so good. And my forever campaign of giving luchadors more love. They're the best goddamn wrestlers ever. And Penta is like like a young, stronger Rey Mysterio who's bigger, stronger, and younger. Dude, he's sick. Age. I love Penta, and he looks cool. The eyes, the makeup, all the moves. He does so many different variations of classic luchador moves. Like, I love, 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 love Penta. And you're going to give me two guys like Swerve and Penta in a great match, and then you're going to give me interference by Prince Nana? Come on. That's my, that's my <laughs> like, easily my match of the week. <laughs> easily shit I love. But Swerve is so, 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 so good, and I wish that more people were talking about him week to week the way that we gush about MJF. Not that MJF doesn't deserve it, but I wish Swerve was 
an AAAA list guy because he's so, so good. Yeah, man, I agree. There was one match that I did want to talk about just because it, it was kind of weird. And I, I don't want to talk about the MJF thing. This has been the only storyline that I haven't liked since the Wardlow. I like the Wardlow storyline, but this is like the first time I haven't liked a storyline he's he's been in because I, I just think it's silly. You just you go to your the commissioner and you say, that guy stole my belt. And the guy says, give it back or you're out. It, it, they, I didn't like it with Jade Cargo. I don't like it with MJF. But I do want to talk about Keith Lee versus Samoa Joe. One, because we got a, a meaty meat chant going a couple times, which was awesome. And I, I, love, I love that so much. Two, it was two huge guys going. But three, the end of the match was really weird. Samoa Joe walked away. He won the match and remained the Ring of Honor television champion. Said, I'm the greatest television champion that's ever lived. And I'm walking away from this title because the next title I put around my waist is going to be the one that Max has. And I like Joe and I thought it was cool. Like, like he was coming off cool. But then as I'm watching it, he's laying the belt down there and I'm like, He's kind of, they're kind of dumping on the belt, man. Like, why didn't Keith Lee win? And are, are you going to have a, maybe you're going to have a tournament for the Ring of Honor belt? I'm not big on tournaments, but maybe that's what you do. But I don't under, I didn't understand it and I didn't like it. And I really like Joe. I think his promos are cool. He could hang with Max on the mic when they were going back and forth. And I want him to get back with Max, but I just didn't, I don't know if this was the best way to get there, dude. What'd you think of this match? Yeah, this is my unmatch of the week as far as like these are two, you know, I'm always talking about big guys, but these aren't the type of big guys that I really like, even though I am a Keith Lee fan and I'm coming around on Samoa Joe after 15 years. But it it just feels sluggish. It felt very like sluggish and they're big boys. You know, they're they're big, big boys. Biggums. It's just not my type of scenario. So I think maybe you need maybe you can't have two guys that are the exact same body type like that for the type of match that I like. You might need a different style for that, but whatever. Uh, it was fine. I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it. I also disagree with you. I wouldn't want to see Samoa Joe back with MJF at all. I like Samoa Joe and I like Keith Lee, but I don't, I don't like him that much. I just, if they're doing this long-term storytelling where he has no friends, they have to have mm -hmm. people there ready to, to hunt him and kill him. And they, I think, for what the story is, they're telling it well. I'm just not a big fan of the root of the story. That's that's my. Does it feel like Samoa Joe is one note his whole career, or is that? Yeah, but I would say it's I a hell of a note. I should be you know rewarding I mean? rewarding him for consistency. I guess like maybe just like you know he's always kind of been the same, but like he's just kind of a grumpy guy. I think he saves a killer promo for a killer story, and when he's not in a killer story, he goes to his go to promo. One is good. The other, which is rare and he holds back, is great. And I've seen him do it. I don't know if you remember when he cut that promo on Brock Lesnar when he first went to WWE and Brock. No, no, I remember. Paul Heyman and he's like, don't you look at him. I'm looking you dead. And I was just like, oh, my God, dude, smoke. <laughs> yeah. Joe's about to kick your ass. So I, I think he, he has good like ones in there, but he saves it for the right guy. Oh, and I like it when he, no, I think he does. And he did great against MJ. When the promos, he's good. I think he's good. It's just, he seems like a butthole. His whole life, he just seems like <laughs> Vader or something. Like he's, like he's in the locker room in the corner People taping like his wrist. And like, let's he's have got a good, good match. Rep. You know, he just seems like, kind of like, I'd like to have a beer with Keith Lee. I'd like to hang out with a lot of these wrestlers. You know, I have had beers with lots of these wrestlers. No, I feel you. Good. I feel you. You'd rather see Drew versus Big Bill. That's what you want to see. Yeah. Let's move on. WWE SmackDown. The LWO, the Latino yeah. World Order, is having some serious pr problemas, mi amigo. Um, the show, though. I like that. I like the they LWO They did open opening. the show, That's man. I like this Latino's open, opening shows. They had Andrade on collision against huh. Daniel Garcia, and that match killed, too. That I, They killed it, and then these guys killed it. Big time. And when I say killed it, I mean did it. They're doing a very good job, not a very bad job. Dynamite had the best. I think Dynamite had the best ending we've seen in a long time. And I think that SmackDown had the best opening we've seen in a long time. Yeah, I dude, I would like agree with that. Both were strong. Collision opened strong. Oh, yeah. That match was heat. That match was straight heat. Okay, so. Well, they did the a thing on they did a thing on Dynamite where it was like, 
you know, this whole time I've thought that every time I see that devil mask that it's MJF, but instead they, you know, MJF's in the ring when the devil does some damage. So it kind of re- like we're, we're all guessing who the devil is. So I was Gotta like, well, that's Adam a fun Cole kind of gimmicky thing that you would have seen back in the day. Anyways, I like that ending because it was a nice surprise. But SmackDown gave us a, the best opening I've seen in a long time with the LWO and Carlito. Break it down. Rey Mysterio, he went out there. He took accountability for the loss, but he did blame Logan Paul for cheating because Logan Paul's a cheating yeah. son of a gun. Always having a friend at the ring to help him out. You punk, dude. You couldn't beat Seth Rollins at Mania. You couldn't have beat Ray without that help, too, you scumbag. I don't know about heel Logan Paul, though. I feel like in his heart of hearts, he wants to be a baby face. I haven't bought him 100% as a heel yet, but I do think he's I doing agree. a good job. But that said, back to the back to the segment. Carlito interrupts. He should have been out there anyway, but I guess they protected by saying he had a match coming up next. But he comes out and interrupts, and he's like, hold up, dude. It's, you're blaming Logan Paul? Nah, man, you need to be blaming Santos Escobar because Santos is the one that left those brass knuckles on the on the ring apron. And this causes a major eruption in the LWO, and they all kind of are trying to split Carlito and Santos, keep them away from one another. It's about to go down. Santos finally is like, cooler heads prevail. He's like, yeah, all right, dude, I'm bounce. He bounces, and then Carlito has a match against Big ass Bobby Lashley, who's just so sick to look at, man. He's just got the best body in the universe, man. He still looks exactly the same as the day he debuted in professional wrestling. It's so crazy. So they had a match and there was some BS going down. He was getting help from the, from Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits. And so some of the LWO comes out, Santos comes out, Ray comes out with a chair. There's a whole conflict of like, yo, why didn't you help? What's going on? And and Santos's point of view is like, what that? Why are you going to listen to this guy? It was supposed to be us. This guy came in. He's from the outside. Like it felt very real and honest. It even made me feel like old school days where Mexicans and Puerto Ricans weren't cool. And it'd be like, yo, man, that guy's Puerto Rican. You're not going to let him in there. And I'd be like, dude, I'm Puerto Rican. And they're like, I thought you were Mexican, man. What's wrong? So. It, it reminded me of that and made me uncomfortable in a, in a good way. That's what that's what art should do. They have this whole beef and then Bray's not having it. And he pushes Santos and he put his hands on the on the bigger man. And Santos just goes to town and they have a fight. And Ray gets up on him like once. and Santos ain't having it again and just beats Ray's ass. And then later in the show says he had it coming. I mean, he's just he's all the way done with the situation. So we'll find out in the very near future if he was using Ray all along or if he feels like he's the one that was betrayed and he's the same guy and it's Ray that changed. And I hope they take the latter because that would give him more to do than just being an asshole. If, if he didn't want to take accountability and kept blaming other people for his problems, I think that would give him a little more to, to, to chew on. But I love this segment. I love that they're giving Latinos a chance, Jeff. Latinos on Heck television. Yeah. And it was fun for me to watch. What would you think, Bo? Well, I, I don't really care about any races represented. <laughs> but I'll tell you, when it comes to wrestling, Latinos are the best. So that I want to see more Latinos in wrestling. That's one time that I do care. A Carlito, though, what, maybe you could help me understand. Yeah. I thought Carlito wasn't popular. But his return nope. has caused quite a stir. People are people are real into it. He returned and had bad bunnies back. And that's why people were like, oh, okay, he's a good guy now. So and they were just happy to see him. But yeah, he returned as a good guy to get bad, bad bunnies back at the Puerto Rico show. And so the crowd went bananas. So yeah, boom, magic, you're a baby face. Okay. Well, that makes me happy. Cause I remember like he seemed kind of like a gimmicky thing back when I used to see him. And now he came back stronger and Obviously, wrestling fans do love anything they've seen before as far as like, what? It's, you know, even if it's even if it's like a surprise gimmicky wrestler in a Royal Rumble, we we pop because we're like, what? Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen the 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 green rocket or whatever the hell that guy's name it's was. It's the goon. And, and so, <laughs> yeah, like whatever it is, we pop. It's like, holy crap. They brought back Papa Shango. I loved the opening. I love a big, big, big LWO guy. So I wish they would run with that a little harder. I wish that every yeah. time we saw Mysterio, he was with the LWO instead. You know, I want him to roll with his click at all times. The main event was damage control versus yeah. Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and Asuka. 
And there was some beef because Kyrie Sane's in the picture now and Bailey didn't know where she was going to fit in. And then Eo's like, look, man, we all want what's best for me here, right? I'm the champ. I wanted her here. I want you here. Let's all get along. Let's have a Bailey hug. I don't hug anymore. Yes, you do. Let's go, girl. Boom. They hug it out. Then they're going to have a match later that night. What? That's how it went down, Jeff. And then they, know, they had the main percent. event. They had a, you know, it was a good match. I'm not a big fan of trios matches, but they still had a good match. Charlotte Flair's the shit, and uh, everything she does is awesome. I love Asuka. Bianca Belair is so freaking strong and athletic. She could do anything in there. And Io Sky, you guys already know what I think about Io. She's she's the one, man. She's the bomb. Kyrie Sane, welcome back. And uh, Bailey's dope. I think I already said that. So anyway, they had this match. And we're not going to talk about it because all we're going to talk about is the end of the match. Bianca's been getting her ass beat for a good five minutes. And she's trying to tag Asuka. Charlotte Flair's down and out. She got jacked up and bad. And then finally, she's going to break free. She's done some crazy moves. I'm telling you all, if you haven't seen Bianca Belair, she's like, it's kind of like Jade Cargill. She's not as cut like as Bruce lead out as Jade Cargill, but she's thicker and looks like she could bench press more than Jade Cargill. And she's got this crazy long braid. And sometimes she like whips fools with it. And it sounds awesome because they got like a clapper in there. It's dope. So check her out if you haven't seen her. And her opening <laughs> music's cool too. So anyway, she finally is going to make the tag. And she dives for Asuka. And Asuka says, no ma'am. And pulls her hand back. And she turns on her team and goes back with her two Japanese girls and she rejoins her team, and they whip everybody's ass. They whip Charlotte Flair. I mean, they they basically crucify her. They string her out and just start kicking the hell out of her. Bianca Belair says, oh, I'm not done yet. They go, yes, you are. Boom, get your punk ass down. They beat her ass some more. My homegirl, Shotzi Blackheart, comes out with the short hair. She's like, no, I'm going to save you. Boosh, no, you're not. Bam, she gets her ass beat. And then EO Sky does her blind backflip, which is the coolest moonsault ever. And never looks back once from the moment she climbs the turnbuckle till the moves over. She does not look back. It's so sick. I would never be able to pull that up. She hits it. Then they're like, we're not done. Kyrie hit her with the sick elbow. Wah, bah, bah. She gets her with the elbow. Everybody's ass gets beat and damage control looked good for the first time in a long time. I thought it was cool. I love the ending. The match was what it was, but I love the finish. What say you, sir? The only thing that would have made it better for me is if they turned on Bailey also. So it was yes. just those three. Told they I should have, have brought her in that. for a hug and it. then turned her out yep. like a gang. Yeah. Oh, dude, that would have been. Yeah, so and be good. like, and be like, we got a new group. Fuck you. You're out of here. This is the where it's us three. We're the badasses. We're from Japan. We're gonna crush everybody. This is a new group, and that gives Bailey a new chance to try to like regroup what damage control is gonna be now or. If yeah. it ever will be, I think that'd have been cool, but it was awesome. And they, and they all like kind of match all three of them match with the way that they dress and the way, I don't know if that's just a coincidence or if that's a Japanese wrestling thing, or I don't know, but they look so cool. They're all wildly capable as far as yeah, like man. being the baddest women in female wrestling. Also, this match made me go, why aren't we doing Charlotte versus Rhea for the next three years straight? If Charlotte still has it like this. Is there like a scheduling thing or is like Charlotte not really want to, you know, do that? Or like, I'm just wondering why, because Charlotte is, I forgot how big and strong and capable she is. Uh, oh, hell yeah, dude. Match. So I'm, I'm wondering why that isn't the, the scenario where we're, where we're complaining about it in eight months, like Rhea versus Charlotte again. I'm surprised that's not. <laughs> yeah, it what should be WWE like John Cena and Randy Orton. Our throats. Yeah. Yeah. It's confusing, like, but for whatever reason, that isn't what they're doing, and uh, I'm wondering why. But no, I Probably love this. This sketches. is my moment of the week, and I hope that someone hears us in creative and has has uh, Bailey get her ass kicked by these three chicks, and then they become the biggest stable in pro wrestling. I think I think it's got a chance of happening. I think that's got to be in the works. I love all things Japanese. You guys can't see what Me too. what Jeff can see, but that's like one of the first Japanese anime ever. And from manga comics right over my shoulder, it's called Golgo 13, the professional. You guys should check it out. It's really sick. Um, my match of the week was same as Jeff's. And my moment of the week was the same as Jeff's um, for the exact <laughs> same reasons why. So we agreed on a lot of wrestling this week. You guys stay tuned for Thursday. That is unsanctioned Thursdays, where we're going to break down the pay-per-view for AEW full gear. And your friend Freddie will finally be rid 
of this You Stole My Title storyline, and we can get something new going. On behalf of the great Jeff Dye, I'm the sometimes great Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> this is Wrestling with Freddie, Wrestling with Prince. Peace. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. <laughs> 